Welcome to Living World, Coach Rosie, powered by Avera Sports. This is Mark Rosen, Coach Rosie. I want to thank you for taking the time, the energy, and the effort to be with us today. I know there's a million things going on. Gang. Hey, we're pushing into, and I can't believe this either. Just uh, re- think about this. In another few weeks, when June is done, we're halfway through 2022, and it's a downhill run. We're pushing 2023, just coming around the corner too. So a lot of things to get done in the next six and a half, you know, six months and a couple of weeks, a little bit of change on top of that. If you want to, you know, make some changes, if you want to do some things, we always talk about when you elevate and you be in here, you're part of Elevation Nation. You're part of our group gang, whether you want to be or not. And what we talk about as being part of a Elevation Nation, team member of Elevation Nation is that. We need to separate to elevate. We need to let go of where we're at and get to move up to new levels, okay? And one of the things we're going to talk about on the show today is not always just running hard and beating yourself up. And I see that so much as a, as a conditioning performance, strength and conditioning coach, a performance coach working with athletes. A lot of times the real go-getters are type A people, so they think more is better, the more better strategy and, I, and I'm one of those guys, and I have a hard time sometimes backing off and, you know, taking my foot off the accelerator. And even, you know, we have models of, you know, all gas, no brakes, and you'll hear us talk about those type of things um, a lot of times. But the truth is, and the smart thing is, is that recovery can change your life. And we've talked about recovery couple different times on the program, different ways to recover. What we're going to do on the program today, I'm going to talk about my top 10 recovery rules um, that I talk about, and I'm going to probably throw in a little bit of my training philosophy that goes in with it. And I just know that recovery can make a huge impact and and, and really change your life. And I've gotten uh, to I'm going to level with you here. I've kind of gotten away from that, taking care of myself and even some of the tips. And that's what got me thinking about this. And I was talking to a few other people that really been pushing themselves hard through the summer and just to have the chance to you know take a step back and go, okay, I need to get back on track and take care of some of the things that I need to do and get back to be consistent with my training workouts because same thing, I'm pushing myself pretty hard um, with and not with the training part of it. Again, that's what I got to get back doing better on my training. But one of the things I know is that even if I don't have time to get to the gym to train or get, you know, get on my bike or get out for a walk or get moving along those lines, if I can do take some of these things, you know, stretch, rest, recover, um, makes a huge impact on how I feel from a physical standpoint and also a mental standpoint that can help me operate it and keep functioning and get me back to stay on track to work out. Because I'm just like with you guys, all of a sudden I get off track and I have a hard time getting back on that road and pushing that pedal again and get going again. So I'm going to talk about, like I say, uh, my top 10 recovery rules and I think the, the recovery rules help you to train longer and more passionately, too. So don't go anywhere. When we come back, that's what we're going to be covering, those top 10 recovery rules. This is Living North Coach Rosie, powered by Avera Sport. We'll be back right after this. Welcome back to Living North Coach Rosie, powered by Avera Sports. This is Coach Rosie, and again, thanks for joining us today and uh, taking a gap in, in, in time, using some, some of your precious time to hopefully take that and tweak it and become active. We always say on the show, at the end of the show, don't just dream it, but do it. And what I'm hoping you do with this information, gang, I always say my, my mantra for 2022 is I want to impact lives through education, inspiration, and movement. We're going to educate you here. I hope to inspire you. But if you don't add that last part and get movement, get up and take action, it really doesn't matter. You can sit and listen to the program all day long, but you might as well turn and listen to some music because hopefully the music will inspire you to do something. I'm hoping the words we talk about today and what we're going to talk about today get you fired up. And what we're talking about today, if you're just popping in, is my top 10 recovery rules um, that I think can really help and change some things. So here we go for my top 10. My number one is to cycle your workouts. Okay. 
you can't always go hard. It's a recipe for injury, regression, and pain, which are just a handful of the many agonizing symptoms associated with overtraining. Okay, you can't just always beat yourself up. And I said, well, I'm gonna, I want to make my sure I'm tough. Well, if you want to just do something tough, let's go out in a, a cornfield somewhere, and I'll take a bat, and we'll, we'll hit you, see how tough you are, and that'll toughen you up. That makes no sense whatsoever, right? We want to split up our routine to avoid working the same body parts on consecutive days, and be sure you're mixing in a variety of exercises, modalities, and training tools. So even if you are doing a total body workout. I want to change up those exercises. I maybe want to use weights one day, bands the next day. I maybe want to do elliptical one day and go biking the next day or get in a pool. So I want to cycle and change those workouts up. Number two, commit to active recovery. Okay, I suggest two active recovery days a week. Now, active recovery doesn't mean complete rest. Okay, Instead, focus on low-intensity activities like walking, yoga, meditation, stretching, then what that'll do is encourage repair, regeneration, recovery without further muscle breakdown and energy expenditure. So it lets your body take some time to recover. I know when we do our boot camps, gang, we set out a plan and we actually include, and, and it's just that's part of our cycling, our workout, and commitment to recovery. We change we change our workouts up every single time. And sometimes we even have folks say, wow, the workout today seemed fairly easy. And instead of being an hour workout, it was only a 45 minute workout today. And it's like, well, yeah, the reason it was easy we did that was, and we don't necessarily have to tell them that, but it's to push in an active recovery day. So people have a chance to feel better when they come back. Right. And which kind of works into to number three, take time off each week. Take one day off from exercise per week. And while active recovery is a great way to initiate recovery, we just talked about your body does need some time off, even if it, you know, even if it doesn't feel like it. During those rest days, you know, still make sure you're eating right. You're fueling up on the fuels that you need for maximum recovery. But having one day off a week, research shows that, and when they work with high-level athletes, they show it too. It just helps the body reset. It helps the mind reset. And it helps actually from a spiritual standpoint too. It helps reset. Um, my number four is to foam roll post or pre-workout. And if anybody, if you're not familiar with foam rolling, let us know. We have a, a foam rolling workout that you can go through. It literally takes five minutes you know, before or after your workout to lengthen the fa- fascia and uh, soften the hardened tissue. And let's be honest, no recovery tune is complete, um, I don't think, without the efforts of a foam roller. You know, hit your hips, your glutes, your IT bands, your abductors, your lats, your back. I assure you, this minor commitment pays huge dividends, okay? Getting a foam roller, getting a tennis ball, those type of things. Number five, and this is where I have a hard time and I've been doing better at it, is to stretch before you go to bed. So increase your flexibility, increase your mobility with a short stretch sequence before hitting the hay. Okay, There's no better time to lengthen and strengthen some of those areas right before bed. Like you know, poses like a downward dog, an up dog. And I'm using some of those yoga words, right? And I'm not even a yoga guy, but a pigeon pose. Some of the um, dynamic warm-up things that we put a stretch on. Um, it's going to relax your mind. It's going to prep your body for recovery um, as you start snoozing. So if you can just take some time nice and easy, let the mind settle. And this is a good time while you're holding a stretch to meditate. And, and that's actually number six we, I have down is practice breath work and meditation daily because there's nothing better than to just silence your mind, quiet your mind, listening to your spirit. And I know we're tapping you into some deep stuff here, right? But to really just quiet your mind after a long day, and I know everything's pretty hectic, and I know that's where I practice um, breathing for three minutes. I try to do breathing thing every morning and three minutes in the evening, and frankly, that's I've noticed a huge difference if you can be able to do that, and that's practice breathing through your diaphragm and not being a chest breather. Okay, so one of the ways we do that, we teach our folks, our athletes to do that is to literally sit in a chair and take your arms and reach way up above your head 
and then just take deep breaths. And what you're going to notice by having your hands above your head and taking deep breaths, it's hard to be a chest breather. And you're actually going to start breathing through your diaphragm, breathing through your belly button is what I say, right? And what I want to finish up with this too is, don't get hung up on the word meditation, right? I mean, people are like, oh, I don't meditate. Well, any quiet time with intention um, qualifies. And so I'm just going to dive into this real quick. One of my morning routines is I do my breathing. I sit down and I have a morning routine. I listen. I have a motivational, it's a motivational minute thing that I listen to. It's actually about two to three minutes. Um, where and so whether it's you praying, meditation, breathing, like I said, I kind of do a combination of that every single morning. I get up, take a shower, grab my breakfast that I make. It might be toast, maybe a couple of eggs. Come into the computer, watch my motivational minutes, and there's usually a lesson that goes with it. I journal a little bit focus on what I'm going to do that day and, you know, breathe. And that really helps set the tone, I feel, for the day. Okay, so that breathing and meditation, like I say, whether you think it's praying, meditation, breathing, whatever you do, try to look to include that. It makes a huge difference. Number seven is soft tissue work is a must. Okay, I suggest a massage, um, body work at least once a month when it comes to soft tissue work. And you know more of the merry, and I understand that costs some money. We have like at, at the gym, we have those um, massage guns, so you can do self massage. Um, one of my goals is always to have you know one one massage, one body work, at least once every two weeks if I can. I've gotten away from that, and I know that was tough during COVID, but. If you can do that or even have, like we say, a massage gun, something you can do on your own, really does make a difference. Um, and that ties in with number eight. I have using recovery hacks and tools. Um, other elite, you know, recovery tools include saunas, um, cryotherapy tanks. And if anybody knows of, about a cryotherapy tank in the area, Sioux Falls, Sioux City, I'd love to know about it because I want to find a cryotherapy, you know, cold water tank that I can get in. Um, Theragun again is is great. One of one, probably one of my most popular tools. And that's that the Theragun is that massage gun that we use and we have those at the gym. So I try to do that each day. Number nine, gang, sleep is crucial. You know, did you know that your phone has an off button? <laughs> right, ditch your devices one hour before bed. Invest in blackout curtains. Find the right room temperature. Read. Practice gratitude journaling. Uh, whatever it takes to get superior slumber. It's not about the hours. It's about the quality. Make sure you're getting good quality. And then the last one, gang, is to follow a good nutrition and supplement diet, right? So whatever you're taking, make sure that you're getting in good nutrients, right? Um, And I always... From a supplement standpoint, like one of the supplements we talked about on the show before is ZMA, zinc and magnesium. Helps so the magnesium helps your body, helps you recover, helps you sleep. Your zinc and magnesium ZMA is going to help you sleep. There's some other things, um, and you can reach out and touch base with us, and maybe that'll be something we'll talk about on the program. Is some nutrition and supplement things you can take to help you get better sleep. Um, so those are my top ten. If you follow some of those, um, we're going to take a quick break because I'm going over right now. But when you come back, we'll talk about these a little bit, take one of your questions out of the goodie bag. This is Living Well with Coach Rosie, powered by Avera Sports, and we'll be back right after this. Welcome back to Living World with Coach Rosie, powered by Avera Sports. Again, thanks for being part of Elevation Nation and joining us today, gang. Again, we, we know to elevate, you have to separate from where you're at and get to new levels. And one of the things we do on the show here, gang, we talk about we want to impact lives through education, inspiration, and the last thing is movement. Uh, if you ever have a question from the education standpoint, or if there's something we can do to inspire you, but the education, if you have a question you want to get to us, Go to, I always just say, you can email here at the radio station at coach at kvht.com. I always tell folks, just go to coachrosie.com. That's our website, coachrozy.com. That takes you to our website. My contact information is there. And when you reach out, I will get in touch with you. If you have a question, you can email me, text me, call me. And if we use your question on there, you actually get a long-sleeved 
Living Wealth Coach Rosie t-shirt. And this week I'm, I'm sending a shirt to Brody and Sherry, and they actually didn't email. They called me and had some questions. The reason I'm bringing that up is um, a lot of times folks will email and we'll answer questions. I'll read that. But they actually called me, and we had a pretty good discussion. And what they were talking about is they were really, they've been really working out hard, actually been staying with it since their New Year's resolutions, which we know is tough to do, right? Gang, we're halfway through the year, and they've been hammering it long. They said, hey, Coach, we've been really working hard. We've been eating right. But we're still not, you know, and they, we said, they said we saw some really, really good gains when we first started. And again, of course, those plateaued. We talked about changing up workouts and doing some different things. But one of the things I told them, gang, is you can train hard and eat right. But if you do not recover, if you don't do things that's going to let your body help to recover, you're never going to be your best. So it's not always about beating yourself up more and more and more. That works when you first start going, but... You really almost have to plan your rest and recovery along with your workouts. That should be just part of as you're putting your programming together. When I'm going to recover, am I going to stretch? Am I doing some soft tissue work? When am I going to foam roll? And have that within your program. And if you need to maybe get rid of a lifting exercise or take five minutes off of your cardio, you know, circuit training, your HIIT training while you're doing intervals, maybe knock an interval off and make sure you're getting your stretching, your soft tissue work in. That could be just as important or critical as you getting in that last bout of your interval training on the treadmill or the elliptical. Okay, so you can train hard and eat right, but if you do not recover, you'll never be your best. And that's Brody and Sherry are really going to make a, a effort and get back with me, and I can share that if they, you know, I'm sure they will share that with you in the next couple of weeks of how they're doing with that because they said that's probably one of the big things. They're not sleeping very good. Um, you know, they're eating, but they're not doing the things, and they're starting to notice little bang up, little things on their body that are starting to tweak and bother them. I said, well, yeah, because you're not stretching. You're not taking the time to, you know, train to be better and have better performance instead of just training for the sake of training and say, look at me, I'm training, and I look good, but I feel crappy, right? We want to make sure we look good, feel good, our body doesn't have pain, and we're living at our 100%. So hope that helps, gang. Hope this uh, recovery information was good for you. I got to get rolling here, but as we always say, gang, don't just dream it, but do it. Take action with what you're doing today. This is Living Well with Coach Rosie, powered by Avera Sports. This is Mark Rosen, Coach Rosie, and until next time, make it a great one. <laughs>